Thanks so much for joining us. I'm Maria Soreo. I am joined today by Dr. Greg Allen. Now, many people know you here on the peninsula from Freedom For You. Mm -hmm. And of course, he's got a very, very famous football dad. So you come from a football family, Greg. That's what I've been told. Coach George Allen, of course, <laughs> is your father. That's and right. he coached the Rams uh -huh. and the Redskins. Right. Now, wh which team were you more loyal to growing up? Actually, neither, because when we were very young, <laughs> uh, he grew up with the Bears. That's true. So we had all these Bears years when we were little kids growing up for a long time. But I know your sister told me at one point that you would change hats every time you switch teams, right? Oh, of course. <laughs> we, change, we have a lot. My kids call me a confused sports fan a confused, because I have, a, yes. you know, three different teams I wear: right. a hat or a sweater. Or and and of course now currently it would be the Redskins because your brother, He's my brother Bruce Allen, is the general manager for the Redskins. Yeah, that's right. So and whatever you, teams he on, that's our team. And you went, of course, to see a game this year. I did. I went to a game and they won. It was good. It was really good. You know, you got a new quarterback, RG3, on the team. <laughs> right. There's so many young quarterbacks this year. We look at Colin Kaepernick, who's playing mm -hmm. with the 49ers. Uh, so many so many new guys. It, it's pretty amazing that they're getting to the playoffs quicker. Why do you think that is with some of these young guys? I saw Willie Brown last week, and I asked him that question. And what did he say? How come so many rookies can play right away? And he right. said they're, they're so trained up now in youth sports and in college. The physical ability training, they're, they're more ready to play in the professional level. It's not such a period of time where you have to learn the system. Pretty amazing. So that's, uh, yeah. Because it used to, you know, a guy used to sit on the bench and do the Steve Young, Joe Montana thing and watch and yeah, wait. Yeah, watch for years to figure it out, right? They don't do that anymore. You know, they're ready to go right yeah. away. Yeah. Now, this year, of course, it's not just the Super Bowl, it's the Harbaugh Bowl. Yes. First time two brothers are going to coach against each other for I the Ravens know. and the 49ers. Who do you think has the edge? The, the one that was a quarterback in the NFL or the one that has more NFL experience? Well, that's a good question. Yeah. I don't know. Pro well, probably the, I would say, Jim because he played. You think so? But uh, you never know. You never know. But see, I'm kind of thinking that maybe John because he's, he's coached longer and... Jim, I have a great story for you. He uh -huh. actually, I, I met him the first time when he was a quarterback for the Chargers. Okay. Um, after he was with, he was with um, Indianapolis for a while. A lot of teams, yeah. Yeah, and he was he was kind of right. over the place. Yeah. And super nice guy. And then he goes to Stanford, and he turned. He was like real quiet with the Chargers, and then he just he turns into this college coach, animated and I know, and very I, aggressive. Very <laughs> yes, very aggressive. And I think now he's sort of settling in between the two. Which is kind of cool. When you see him on the sidelines, sometimes he's so, you know, over the top, and other times he's like very calm and yeah. has his clipboard out there with all his notes. Yeah, and yeah. very disciplined, very, very disciplined. organized. Yeah. And I think him and him and John are they're they're very different styles. John is kind of more sort right. of relaxed about the whole thing. Right, right. So who are you? Who are you thinking might do better? I don't know. <laughs> how about as a team? How about as a team overall? You've got one. Well, every time you get to the Super Bowl, both teams are so good. They've They're really they've good. Beat everybody to get there. Right. It's very hard to, you know, either one can play well and win. And did you ever so. go to any Super Bowls? Only yes, I've been to the only games that we're involved in, and we lost all of them. <laughs> <laughs> well, no. How many years ago was that? Well, how I, old were you? My brother Bruce was with the Raiders yes, recently. Yes, and you went to San Diego. San Diego. Okay. And then uh, I was uh, 17 when they lost to the. Uh, when the Redskins lost to the perfect Dolphins here at the Coliseum in LA. That, yes. So it's the only two games I went to. Now, so we, I guess I've been to two. Okay, so back then there, there wasn't as much media, of course. So it was probably a little calmer. What was it like? Uh, a little bit. It was a lot of hype, though. A lot the of Dolphins hype. Had a, if you're involved in the football. This was a perfect record, yeah, so. Yeah, and it was LA, so it was, it was you know, 90 some thousand people there. It was, it was a big deal. Yeah, well, no, it was a battle. Yeah, it was. Yeah. And they always are, of course. What do yeah. you think was the biggest difference going many years later to San Diego when the Raiders played? Oh, all the, well, you, the Super Bowls now have no home crowd. They don't. They, they they sell it to the, it's a corporate sort of event. It really is. So you go there and there's about, you know, 500 guys in their 30s dressed like they're going to a business waiting in line for beer. Yeah. And then something good happens and the crowd hardly cheers. I know. Like when the, the Tampa only got like 10,000 tickets for the home team to come watch their team. It's crazy. So it's sort of a neutral crowd, which is kind of weird. It, there's you know, not the enthusiasm and intensity. And, and you're right. I think they, sh like they should probably give like a certain amount of tickets to like the fans, you know, at, at a normal price. 
Because that's something else, of course. Like you said, the they corporate... They do sell, but it's a big money event. To yeah. Get money and to, you know, sell corporate sponsorships and this and that. Oh, it's, you know, but it's always exciting. And, you know, Championship Weekend I love because I think those are the most exciting games. Sometimes sure, yeah. it's kind of anticlimactic to the very last game, but yeah. we had such great games this past weekend. Oh, I mean, yeah. it was really kind of anybody's game. Oh, yeah, and the weekend before, incredible. Oh, yeah. Competition and oh, games and, oh, yeah, very exciting. It's pretty cool. <laughs> now, of course, we had more football talk, but we also have basketball here. You know, and, and two teams kind of going in two different directions at this point, the yes, Lakers and the Clippers. Huh? Yes, and we're going to go to our field reporter, Will Lupartis, who is at the Staples Center to fill us in on the Lakers and the Clippers. Take it away, Will. Well, Maria, I am here at Staples Center and here to update you on the latest with the Clippers and the Lakers. Let's start at the top which is where the Clippers have been hanging around for most of this season. They're top of the Pacific Division, and they have the second best record in the NBA. Now, Chris Paul went down with a minor knee injury and just missed this recent three-game road trip where they played Memphis, Houston, and Minnesota. Well, Eric Bledsoe stepped in. They won all three games, and they are back at home where they have a few more games right until that Grammy road trip where they will be gone most of February. Now, um, the Lakers, on the other hand, they have been riddled with injuries. Pau Gasol, Steve Nash was out for a little while. Dwight Howard was out for a little while. They are all back now. The Dream Team starters are uh, once again intact. They've won a few, lost a few, but they are still hanging around that 11th spot in the West. A lot of people think they won't even make uh, the playoffs this year. But with more on what's going on with the Lakers and Clippers, let's go to the locker room. Oh, it's got to be a collective effort. Uh, we just have to continue to emphasize uh, you know, little things, just take, take away layups, take away the easy ones, make them hit tough shots. And, and these guys hit, t hit some tough shots, but make them hit more. And that's the only way that that uh, teams should have a chance to beat us. But uh, you know, when we give them uh, too many layups, points in the pain, uh, turnovers lead to fast break points. We're not the quickest team getting back in transition. That that uh, that we know. Uh, so, but uh, still, just, just just take care of the details and um, and, and and help each other. Oh, if if we would have not had those 18 turnovers, that that would help. If you reduce and minimize those turnovers to 10, those are eight buckets, <laughs> pretty much that uh, that you cut down and. Uh, so that uh, that would make a big difference. So that's that's something that we we should continue to uh, to put our minds into. Well, we got to be aggressive. Uh, we we got to get after it from the beginning. We have to be consistent throughout the game. Uh, and hopefully, we'll put, we won't put ourselves in a hole early on. So we have to fight from the, from uh, early on all the way back into the game. Uh, they're playing well. Uh, so uh, they're, they're, they have a deep team, and uh, but we we should play our game. We should be aggressive, and uh, and we should force them to, to hit shots from the outside, which they have they have good shooters. But uh, what would hurt us is if we allow Harden to get in the lane uh, consistently. If we get Lynn in the lane consistently, uh, so we have to stay in front of guys and uh, and and be be assertive in that end of the floor. Do, do you feel? Um, you know, but if this is going to be something that we're, we're, you know, that I'm going to have to do for a while, then I'm going to need my teammates' help, you know, to free up offensively, um, you know, like we did in the fourth quarter, and you know, create some picks for me and create some easy shots. I mean, I, I, you know, it's going to be tough for me to, to guard the top guy and then come down to the other end and have to go one on one every play. Um, so I'm going to need some help. Well, yeah, but you know, you, you just got to keep going. You got to keep motoring. You know, we had a similar situation in 03. And uh, you, know, you just got to keep pushing. You know, we played very hard tonight. Um, you know, just play a little bit better than we did down the stretch. Uh, I'm doing all right. You know, I, like I said earlier, you know, I'll, I'll need some help offensively. Um, you know, to to save energy and not have to isolate and do things like that. I'm going to need some picks. I'm going to need to catch and shoot like we did in the fourth quarter a little bit, and you know, to to make my job a little easier. You know, I think. In you know, the first three quarters, me just standing around the perimeter, you know, the defense is praying for that. You know, so we gotta we gotta do some things to free me up and get me in open spaces and knock down some shots. This way, I can be more active on the defense on the floor. Oh, yeah. It's cool. Well. You played really well. Yeah, I mean, it's it's cool, but I'm you know right now we focus on uh, being one of the best teams in the league, not just the city. You know, yeah. focus can't be uh, just to be better than one team. It's my new, small. It's a small way of thinking. Uh, right now, we're trying to be, you know, great. We're trying to be one of the best, if not the best team in the league. Uh, you know, we can't worry about officiating and you know, like the small things in the game. Um, if if we focus, you know, on the next play, 
and, and, and the play at hand, that we'll, we'll be all right. Um, tonight was uh, a mental test. We've could have, we could have did better at times, but of course the win we'll take. We won 17 games in a row, and it would mean something if we played Lakers all 17 games. <laughs> you know, we don't. You know, we play them four times a year, like every other team. Like, you know what I'm saying? It's about um, playing well every night, practicing well. You know, becoming better as a team. Um, so we can do things and put ourselves in a position to do things that have never been done. Interesting, the mindset in here with all of you guys, bench players, starters, seems to be in sync. Talk about that. Uh, we still got a lot of work to do, you know what I'm saying? But I, I think that when you have people that really care about each other on the court, but also off the court, I think it really just transcends generation because you have guys that are 40, guys that are 22, 23, you know what I mean? It's like you have a really good mix of people, but I think that's what that's what it makes basketball such a beautiful thing. When you have guys that care about winning and that want to try to do whatever they can to win basketball games. So I think that's why we're in sick and uh, when you win games, usually it's speed of the process and just a little bit. After 17 games straight, do you think teams are sort of gunning out for you guys a little bit more now? Uh, sure, I don't know. You would have to ask them. Uh, <laughs> All I can tell you is that whenever we step out there on the basketball court, people are like excited, people are bringing their A game. So I guess it's a testament of what we're trying to do. So it's upon ourselves to respond to the challenge because we got to. We have no choice. Well, both of these teams will be away from Los Angeles through most of the month of February. Both teams, Lakers and Clippers, have a total of nine games in this building in February. So they will be tested on the road. And Maria, a sport that's actually not in Los Angeles yet, football. Well, there's a little game they're having uh, called the Super Bowl. And uh, I want to know what your picks are, but I think Baltimore and San Francisco will be in that game. Thanks, Will. Now, are you a Laker Clipper fan? Or I have to identify Lakers. Yeah, Lakers. Grew up with the Lakers. Yeah. The Laker games. Will Chamberlain, Jerry West. We were there when Jerry West made the 65-foot shot. Ooh. We were at that game. So what do you what are you thinking now? I mean, they're going well, through some hard I think times the Clippers here. Clippers have really done well building their team, building yeah. their franchise up, and they have great teams and they're definitely stronger than the Lakers are now. But I think the Lakers will figure something out. I do. Oh, you, you do, huh? I do. Whether it's <laughs> not, another not coach. Season, no. Well, maybe not this season, but they will figure it out. All right, back to football talk. What is your favorite Super Bowl snack food? If you're having a get together at your house, oh. what's your favorite? Oh, gosh. Hmm, I know it's a tough what question. What do you like, Liz? <laughs> <laughs> well, actually, speaking of Liz. I think Liz, chips is fine. Okay, Different well, types of chips. That, chips and dip. That's good because yeah. we went to Liz Brown Swanson's house earlier. Uh -huh. And we did some Super Bowl snack food. We made some guacamole. Oh, good. And then an Italian roll-up roll. So let's go to Liz's house and check it out. Oh, great. Yeah. Well, Super Bowl is not complete without lots of fun snacks to eat. I am now joined by Liz Brown Swanson. We're in her kitchen, and she is going to show us how to make the best guacamole I've ever had, and it is her husband's recipe. So way to go, Don. Right. Liz, He's taught me well how to work, work in this kitchen. He has taught you well. Absolutely. Unfortunately, this is the only thing he ever makes in the kitchen. No, <laughs> well, I'm kidding. except for a mess, but right? But he has a super guacamole recipe for Super Bowl, okay. and of course, it's super easy. And there's only six ingredients, and then a seventh, actually, a bonus. bonus, which you have yes. to stay tuned for. Yep. But Basically, quite simply, it's just, uh, I'm going to make a batch for eight to ten people coming over. I'm going to use four avocados, and I've already got three that we've already uh, put in the bowl that we've cleaned up. And one thing about Dawn's recipe, he likes it chunky. Mm, so we, we do, like we chunky, don't, yes, too. Yes, yes. Because you so, like to taste the flavor yeah. of the avocado. So the ingredients, of course, we put four avocado in. Into that, we'll put three tomatoes diced. Okay. An onion. Okay. Um, we'll put a medium-sized onion, Fine. and uh, we tend to like prefer white onion, chopped okay. up. Got some chilies and here. A can of we do mild chilies, but you know, hot is always good too. It's up okay. to you. Great. With a can of the um, diced mild chilies, okay. and of course the um, I think a special ingredient always the is lime. the lime, mm -hmm. the juice of a lime. But you know, it's up to you. you can get a little and then salt of course. There. Um, Season to taste, we use garlic salt. So now why not use regular salt? That's why garlic it? salt? Because well, there's a lot of recipes you need garlic flavor in it, and, and we so love garlic. So you can okay. do you know you could do salt and fresh garlic, but Don, as we know, his recipe is he. We have to follow it because it's recipe. so amazing. Yeah, okay, exactly. Now you're gonna cut one more avocado, and I'm gonna, I'm gonna put another avocado. So we've got three avocado when we want four. Okay, now Liz, how many people do you usually have over for Super Bowl at your house? Because it I know all you're depends. A, you're like a big if, hostess. If the Patriots were in our team, which they're, they're not, not we're then we'd have a big, big. Party. And 49ers. But since, you know, no, 
I'm not sure. You know, actually, Dawn's traveling, so oh, we'll have to save him some of this well, recipe. Maybe you'll be hanging with Laura and I then. Maybe we'll all I'd love to. Out I'd love girl to. Girl Super Bowl day. So really, with avocado, so simple. I just cut it the long way down the middle, and of course, okay. it pops open like that. Okay. And then Dawn's trick to get the seed out is you just give it a tap, so and great. it pops out. Every time it works, it's amazing. And then I'm going to put this aside because another trick you might not know about when you make guacamole, um, fresh guacamole, to keep it from browning, because if you're going to use it the next day, just put the, the seed, seed, back in. seed back in. Yep, great, and great it tip. will stay nice and green. Okay, so um, you're going to go ahead and put in the rest so of I'm the put avocado. My, put my uh, last uh, avocado in. I'm just going to scoop it out real easy. So Liz, who will you be rooting for then? The, the, the Ravens or the 49ers? Are you sticking with the this California is, team or are you going with the East Coast team? You know what? Being from the East Coast, you would think I would, I would pick that team plus you know, they've only won one Super Bowl, That's so right. and it's kind of nice. have had too many And, Super you know, Bowls. they've, what, this is their sixth, the sixth time the sixth going for try, it. yes. And so, okay. um, but I find I'm having a difficult time picking. I think it's because of the brother thing going so. on. I don't know. It's like you kind of want them both to win, but it doesn't work like that. Right. It'll be bittersweet yeah. for one of them. But, but I have to say that I'm going to go for the Ravens. Okay. Although I don't know if, you know, who knows. So I've got all my avocado in. I like that pick. So it's okay. quite a bit from four avocados. Now you said you like it chunky, but do you mix this through first or how do you do it? Well, what, what I'll do is I'll give it a few little, you know, just, just like I said, we keep it chunky. Okay. You know, maybe you spend like 20 seconds kind of mixing it around. Okay. Because then you're going to start to put the other ingredients in. I've already cut up three tomatoes and the medium sized onion. Okay. So and actually, just... I never did this before, but when you measure it up, right. it's about a so cup and a half of diced cup. tomato and a cup of onion. In. So if you'd you prefer, just dump it in. Just dump it all in there together. Okay. And uh, see that? Oops. Here we we'll just uh, get a few uh, in here. Yeah, I think he he's he's really mastered this. But so we've got a nice big bowl going. And um, but again, Maria, it's amazing how many avocados they I sell. Know. It's the biggest weekend for avocado it sales. It is. Right? It's the biggest weekend for avocado sales because guacamole is the number one. Um, snack food. Right. Every Super Bowl party will have guacamole. That's how popular it is. And uh, I think they even have something with the guacamole, with the avocado, about who will win the Super Bowl. But who knows if that's true? Well, I don't think they have any inside info. But you never know. But I, yeah, lots think, of avocado. And it's important, I think, when you're having a Super Bowl get together, you want to keep it easy if you're hosting. Of course. You know, p lots of simple finger foods, easy yeah. things to pick up. You know, people tend to do wings and exactly. chili in the crock pot. And don't and make it too complicated. Have fun with it, right? And I know we have another fun one coming up after this, but Liz is going to finish this one first. Yeah, She's we're going to throw do, in We're going to do a chilies. cold appetizer and a, and hot, a hot appetizer. Yes. I'm sure that game's going to get quite hot. I think it'll get it'll heated, heated up. That's for sure. All right. And okay. then, of course, I'm just going to I'm going to let you mix this up. All right. All right. And uh, while you're stirring this up, I'm just going to grab, I uh, we put in the juice of a lime, as I mentioned earlier. And so um, I've already squeezed one to okay. stir it along. Mm, so so that the in. smells are so amazing. I wish you all could smell this because we'll I can smell the onion and the just the fresh tomato and mm, it just smells amazing. Now you're gonna put the lime juice in. Add it. some lime juice in, okay. and as you can see, looking just good. Dump lime and in. Uh, this is quite a bit. I mean, for four avocados. I'll, yeah, I'm gonna let Maria. Lot. I'm gonna work Maria. Yeah, she's, she's gonna need me work she's today. She's excellent in the kitchen, I have to say. Okay, now you're gonna also. How much garlic salt do you put in? Just so well, we know. We can season to taste. I would okay. say you got to plan for at least a heavy teaspoon, maybe even more. So um, the most amazing part of this. I'm gonna is let you be my tester. Okay, it's so simple, but I have never had better guacamole. Right, look at that. Amazing. All right, so mm. I'm just gonna add a little teaspoon, sprinkle it around in there. I'll let yeah. you um, okay. see how that goes. All right. And uh, shake, shake, shake. And again, this is Dawn's recipe, my husband. It really is. And uh, he's been Where did he this. learn it? He worked at a Mexican res restaurant in San Pedro as a teenager. He grew up on the peninsula. Wow. And, um, Good memory. Yep. And he just kind of got to learn the tricks of the trade. And okay. I, get, I like it chunky. Yeah, I think it's really chunky. So I think, right I think we've got We're it. We're good. Need okay. a little more seasoning. I think okay. just by looking at it, I'll leave you one more scoop. And I'm going to let you try it. Now, we said okay. six ingredients to mix it. Again, it's the avocado, the onion, the tomato, um, lime juice, and garlic salt, and, of course, the avocado. But um, let's... The bonus ingredient, you got to have the chips. Okay, and these are baked chips, which I love baked. Yeah, but you can keep use, it heart healthy. Yes, yeah, so you can use any kind if you like the other kind of chips. Now I'm going to take a bite because okay, and these are nice. These are the favorite. baked scoops, and so which it makes great. it a lot easier. Scoop it in, you know, and uh, tell me though, it may need the juice of another okay. wine. This seems like we got a lot of uh, avocado meat mm. going. Let's see. My ca mm. Our cameraman's waiting. Our cameraman's a vegetarian, so I think this is what he'll have for lunch when we finish. Amazing, amazing, done. Greatest recipe. Mm -hmm. mm. I think he might be um, looking for the rooting for the 49ers being a California guy. Really? 
I do. Well, sorry, Don. Are you excited for the game? I'm excited for the game. Um, I love football, of course, as you know. And it, this is going to be, I think, one of the best matchups we've seen in a really long time. And the brother, the brother component is making it more fun. Right. So I think it's going to be good. We've got young quarterbacks. We've got a lot of stuff that we've never really seen before happening. Mm -hmm. So, of course, it's Ray Lewis's last run. So right. that's always fun. He's, He's 37 and retiring. Player. What an amazing man. He really is. So um, it's just going to be a fun day and, of course, with lots of fun foods. Right. And with him retiring, that's another reason maybe just want to see his, for the team, Ravens? Yes. his team take He's it. He's won one, but, you know, and I'm going to have another bite just because it's so good. Okay. Mm. So we've okay. made what is our, you know, is probably the most popular appetizer you can have. And and the best. And um, and so now we're going to move on to another yes. quick treat uh, that I think is my favorite thing to make whenever I'm having any kind of party because it's fast and people love it. But we're calling it Super Bowl Roll-Up. Calling it Super Bowl Roll-Up. So okay. what I'm going to do is I'm going to just move this away. Can okay. we take this away from you? Well, I guess we'll take it away from you for a minute and then we'll get the next food going. Okay. All right. Now we've done the guacamole. Now we're going to do the second recipe. This is a hot recipe. It's called uh, Super Bowl Roll-Ups. It's for the Italians and the people that like some uh, some bread, some cheese, some salami, a little pesto right. rice. Being that you're Italian, this one's yes. in honor of you, My Maria. people would love this. Of yeah. course, they'd like the guacamole too. But All right, so go ahead and tell us about this recipe now. So um, I can't take all the credit. Another Italian girl, famous Rachel Ray, <laughs> makes a similar appetizer, but as always, I don't follow but directions. you made it your own. I That's changed right. it up. I cha right. changed it up. Hers is with prosciutto. Okay. And what you do is you take any ready-made... This is pizza crust dough, which I prefer because it's low and fat. And I'm going to open it She's, while Maria's going to open it for me. She's yeah. my sous chef. Okay. Uh, but you can use the frozen pie crust and open that up. And also the uh, crescent mix made also by, you know, that you can get in the, in, in the store. Okay, this kind of pops open sometimes on its yeah. own when you unpeel it. Sometimes it doesn't. It's always a fun, it's always, it's really fun though to open that. It is. I always thought it was really I'm gonna fun. I'm going to let her do it. And so okay. what's in this is you can use, it. I'm using the rolled pizza dough. And right. very few ingredients. I'm going to... Uh, take a ready-made pesto. You can make your own if you're being really ambitious, but I have found some wonderful store-made pestos that I love. So once she unrolls that, we're just going to spread the pesto on there and then layer some salami, okay. some cheese, roll it up. And then the toppers, you'll see I'll brush it with some olive oil and to give it some spice, some red pepper flakes because we want to keep things spicy and hot on Super Bowl Sunday. Okay, Liz, now how many of these do you pull apart? All this of is them? one. This is one. This is the pizza dope, Maria, so it's not the crescent mix. So oh, okay. This is why, I, and this is another bonus when you use this. It rolls up nicely. And by the nice. way, you'll find when you're at the store, they have um, ready made pizza crust uh, that are in the roll that you can get the regular crust. This happens to be thin crust, which is my fave. Which I think is better, actually. So you roll it up. I've already preheated my oven to 400. Whatever mix you pick, that's the temperature you'll cook this at. Okay. And then very simply, I'm going to take my pesto, which I guess if you were to measure it out, I'm probably putting about a half a cup over this sheet. Okay. And I'm just going to spread it around. So really, there's no mistakes when you make this. You, you just want to just cover, cover it. it. And it very thinly. Don't eat a lot because you roll it up and there's plenty of flavor when you roll it up. Mm, the smell. Again, the aroma is amazing. I know. And mm, uh, so again, you could make your own pesto if you'd like, but... I, I, I mean, I can't beat this recipe. No, so. this one looks great. So it's okay if you slop it around yeah, a little bit. Yeah, you know, have fun like with it. There's, there's no mistakes when you're when you're cooking. Okay. Only when you're baking. That's you right. And you she's the pretty, baker. Yeah, which we'll get as, to that. We'll see that. All right. Next step I'm going to do is I am just going to cover it with salami. So you don't even have to measure. Um, again, when I told you I got this recipe from Rachel Ray, she tends to use prosciutto. Okay. But and, you can use anything. But you can use. Um, I've made it with turkey. You know, some of my kids are not eating meat these there days. There you go. So I'll just throw some turkey in here, sliced turkey from, from the store. And um, I've even used roasted chicken that I've had left over, <laughs> throwing it in. It's really just kind of fun with it. We like hot Italian ham too, so we All right, so, so as you can see, you just layer it up. Okay. And now that I'm seeing this, I mean, you can make it an authentic pizza and do pepperoni. And oh, then yeah. six slices of cheese. Like that? Okay. I'm missing one. I ate one. <laughs> she did. Okay. All right. I did a sixth it. one here. All right. And then we're just going to roll it up. Okay. And the way I'm going to roll it is um, I'm just going to take it. Here, I'll help you. And uh, we'll spread it around. Oh, wow. You're just going to roll it yeah. long ways. I'm going to roll it long ways. And okay. then because I'm going to cut it like a log. Okay. So as you can see, I'm rolling it up. I'm going to kind of seal it up. Oh, and you wow. can even play with it. I'm going to move it just because this particular cookie sheet. Yeah, and so I'm gonna stick it all in. So it's gonna be sort of like a round log, but yeah. like long. But then you're gonna here. slice it. You're gonna make oh. slices. But you're okay? gonna slice it cooked or raw? After it's cooked. After it's cooked. The okay. next step is so I've got this Tuck nice long in. roll up. And um, by the way, these are great reheated, just like pizza, right? Oh, they look you, you amazing. Need so I'm gonna get some olive oil that I brush on the top, like this, easy. And then uh, red pepper flakes. So you just do Ooh, light red, red pepper. pepper flakes. 
shake it, not too many, but you won't believe it gives it some nice kick. But Flavor. even if you're not big on spice, it's just Amazing. it's just nice. Yeah. Okay. So there you have it. All right. So now this we're going to pop this in the oven pizza for roll. how long? This is going to go in for 10 minutes, just like it gave you on the recipe, the instructions for the pizza crust dough. Whatever the dough you purchase usually will tell you what to bake it at. Okay. Same thing. Eight to 10 minutes. We are going to throw this in the oven, and in about eight minutes, it's going to be hot. It'll be delicious. And you're going to love it. Just eight minutes in the oven, Liz. It smells amazing. I can't wait to yep. taste it. it came out. I said, amazing. it looks like the 50-yard line. <laughs> it's so well, long. That's the well, best place to sit, of course, to watch the there game. There you go. All right. So again, as you saw, our Super uh, Super Bowl roll-up. Super Bowl roll-up. Easy, fast, fun, and it's delicious. Maria's going to be my taster. And I love what you said, Liz, that you can add all the different kind of things. Right. If you wanted to do a little red sauce, you could do... Um, maybe mushrooms, olives. You could do yeah. anything you want, The really. main thing is these mozzarella. Right. The dough is just a fabulous tool to roll whatever you want up. Have fun with it. And you can just slice it all up and put it out. It's good. Cold, hot, however you want to have it. I like to slice a few and then let my guests, like okay. some take almost a sandwich size if they want. Oh, I'm so going to take a little, your, very your little. You're petite. I'm going to do a few slices and let okay. you... You take a taste and can see. I better take the middle one. Ooh, it's well, nice still, and hot. It's still pretty hot. So you want to let it cool a little bit out of the oven, but okay. And um, here you go. Yeah, let, let it settle mm. so we can show this to our That's viewers. Great. It's delicious. It's uh. Now you're gonna have to take a bite. Football too. food. Here we go. Let me take a bite. So mm. um, as we're getting, you know, the football countdowns here, you're excited. Mm. You've been to a Super Bowl. I have. I got to see my Cowboys play at the Rose Bowl mm. and beat the Buffalo Bills, and it was very exciting. So what do you think? This is amazing. It's yummy, it's filling, so it's really great in lieu of a sandwich. Mm -hmm. This would be so great. It's kind of like a pizza sort of sandwich. Right, and again, mm -hmm. being the Italian, she loves prosciutto, so you mm -hmm. can make this with the prosciutto instead of the salami. Excellent. But now that we've had the, um, the hearty food, okay. onto the sweets. Onto the sweets, that's kind of my area of expertise, I guess. Brownie bites, I have to tell you, don't buy brownie mix. Make it at home, I'm gonna give you the recipe. Very simple, you can do it in one pan the stove, pour it in the brownie pan, bake it in the oven. It's amazing. I get more compliments on the brownies than anything else, I think, because they're homemade and they're excellent. Cupcakes, I like to fill my cupcakes with different things, but I wanted to show you something. This is the little football That's liners. Fun. Love it. Okay. And you, of course, you got the little football toothpicks. And also, I did colors on the brownies, purple for the Ravens and red for the 49ers. And then again, the fun little football papers. Um, I did a muffin, so if you don't want something not so sweet and you want a muffin, you can do it like that. Um, everybody always asks me where I get my stuff. I have to give Cake Creations a little plug because it's hard to find these stores. You know, mm -hmm. it's very hard to find stuff like this. So go out to the valley. It's worth your time. Have fun with it. Be right. creative and enjoy. I think one of these toothpicks would look really good on my roll-up. There you go. You could, you could put these in your appetizers yeah. like that. Perfect. Since if you start earlier, you took a piece of cheese from my recipe. I'm yes. taking one of your toothpicks. There she's taking my toothpicks. Now, Liz, you yeah. have to taste one of the cupcakes. All you, right. Now, you I am my taste. I've been waiting for this. I've been waiting okay. for this. And I feel like I've had my lunch, so I'm right. allowed to have dessert now. Just, of course, you have to have dessert. And um, really fun. Okay. I mean, everything you make is amazing. Oh, gosh. Take a bite. Mm. <laughs> Here, let me give you our famous football yard line Oh, my napkin. God. Look at the bonus inside. <laughs> There's just, always a little bonus inside. You just a few extra points for that one. <laughs> okay, Liz, so who's going to win the Super Bowl here? Well, as I said earlier, I, was, I think I am rooting for the Ravens now that my Patriots aren't in the picture. Okay. But, I like uh, that. I don't know. Still, I, feel, I don't know why I think the 49ers might do it. So, But you're the, you're the football princess here. I'm going to let you make the prediction. And you're putting fact, it on the spot. I'm going to put it up on my refrigerator so that on <sighs> Super Bowl Sunday when my friends are all here, they'll say, what did Maria? Thing. I think you're going to be with me, remember? That's true. You might be here. <laughs> yeah. We're going to be out We're going to be together. Um, so I'm going to write down Maria's score, and you'll all be all able right. to remember this. when. Uh, um, I have to be put in the spot. Okay. So 49ers let's say will 49ers, be. 49ers. Let's say 49ers. Make it an exciting game for us. 14. 14. Ravens, 24. Wow. I'm, I'm thinking it might be a wow. little bit different than other people think. So we'll see what happens. I'm going to go with a more experienced brother, but... The younger brother, he might win too, so we're going to see. Uh, Liz, thank you so much. All the recipes, of course, you can get them um, from the website or write us, email us. We'll get them to you. And uh, that was delicious. And, and it was fun. Now we've got lots of ideas for Enjoy the Super Bowl. Enjoy Super Bowl Sunday. Enjoy. Have fun. Let me just tell you something, Greg. That guacamole, it was amazing off the hook. So I didn't good. know they made Greek guacamole, but I guess they, they do. They do, That's yeah. Good. Did you steal a piece of cheese, I heard? You know, I told Liz I took the beer. I was hungry. 
I was hungry at Super Bowl. That's well, okay. I know, it is, right? It's okay with me. I don't know if it's okay with Oh, her. yeah, maybe not. You have to not. check with her. I know, you know how she gets. You know, I heard the amount of guacamole that is made and used uh, Super Bowl Sunday is equal to filling the whole stadium six foot deep. You know, can you those believe Those poor that? avocados. Nobody I, cares about know, those avocados. The little avocados are done. It's, it's their time of year, I guess, when everybody just jumps in. Big Even, sales. They said bigger than Cinco de Mayo, bigger than anything. It's Super Bowl Sunday. It's good for the economy. Now, where will you be watching the Super Bowl this year? Uh, at home. At home, okay. Just kind of relax, watch the game, a little family. That's nice. Over. That's always good, you know. I actually have a friend who's a great chef going to come over and cook. Oh. He's a master chef. How nice. Yeah, he's going to come. Now, Greg, we want to talk a little bit about freedom for you. Okay. Because you... Our football team? <laughs> no, no, that's right. <laughs> yeah. Who will freedom for you be rooting for on Super Bowl weekend? Oh, who are we rooting for? Yeah, uh, who are you rooting for? I'm, I'm for the Ravens. Me too. Yay. Not that I don't love Jim Harbaugh, but I'm a Cowboy fan, so it's against my beliefs oh, to see. root for the 49ers. I just can't do it. You're supposed yeah. to root for your conference, though. So. Yeah, I can't do that. Okay. I can't. Now, after all those yeah. years of those championship games when we'd play them, and it was too hard. And also, uh, Joe Flacco yeah. went to my university. There you go. Not many people went there. Well, see, that's why you're, that's good. So I have a little connection there. And Ray Lewis last year, I mean, I wouldn't mind seeing Ray get another ring and, you know. Scary guy, but, you know. Yeah, but <laughs> I, I like the scary defensive guys, I guess. <laughs> They're always fun. They're well, always fun. Okay, every year, though, you've got an event with Freedom For You. Um, will it be at Trump again this year? Uh, yeah, April okay. 25th okay. is our annual fundraiser. Music and magic is our theme this year. And, and we had so, so much fun last year. We yeah. had all the, the magicians there, yeah. and they were showing us all kind of fun stuff. And yeah, we'll have the magicians from Mag Magic Castle coming out again. And Great. A lot of different music acts happening. Excellent. So good fun time. And if people want to come out, where can they get more information on Freedom For You? At the website, freedomcommunity.com. It's our website. Very good. Well, Greg, yeah. thanks for being with us on our Super Bowl show. Okay. Sharing some of your stories with us, and uh, we'll have to get together and discuss what happens after the Super Bowl is over. Okay, sounds good. All right. Thanks so much for joining us, and now we're going to introduce you to two more Clipper Spirit dance team members. I'm Maria Sorrell, and we'll see you next time. We talk about the energy in the building, and for you guys this year especially, it must be so much more fun to cheer with all of these crazy Clipper fans this year. Absolutely. I mean, in the past two years, we're starting to really pick up, and the Clippers fan base is starting to really get a lot bigger than it was before. And to see everyone come out and support the Clippers, I mean, it's so fun. The energy's amazing. You went through the audition process again this year. What was that like for you? You know, it was very nerve-wracking because I went through a whole year of it, so I know what I was going to miss out on if I didn't make it back. And you see everyone trying out in the first round, and you think, I don't want that girl to take my spot. So, you know, it's a, there's a lot more attachment there, and I feel like you have to work harder than your first year because you don't really know what's going on your first year. Thinking back to last year, were you more nervous, do you think, last year than you are this year dancing? Um, you know, before every dance, it doesn't it doesn't change. I still get nervous. I mean, it's my second year, but before we go out there, I mean, the energy is insane. So I still get nervous. And you know, being a veteran now, I feel like I have to be a role model to the rookies. And so I feel like there's a lot more on my plate this year. What kind of questions do the rookies ask you when they first come? What are they What are they uh, you know curious about? I mean, everything for like pregame, you know, where do we stand for national anthem? How should we wear our hair? What kind of lipstick do you use? Uh, what do you mean when we're saying we're dancing pre facing the press side? I mean, they really have no idea, especially for the girls who've never been in Staples before. So a big learning curve. <laughs> oh, absolutely. <laughs> okay, and of course, what do you do when you're not dancing for fun? What do you guys like to do? Uh, we all like to hang out together, actually. Um, a lot of us are really close, and we live within a couple miles with each other. So a lot of us go out to the movies, we go out to dinner, and we just love to hang out outside. It's nice, because I think everybody wonders, you know, what kind of hobbies you have. Are you a shopper? Do you go to the movies? What do you like to do? Well, I also work full time, so that keeps me very busy. <laughs> Between this and that, you're squeezing in time just to visit with friends as well. Absolutely, yes. Okay, now, after the games, are you the kind of person that needs to wind down a little bit? Because I know the energy is so crazy in here that sometimes I go home and I'm like, I can't go to sleep now. Oh, absolutely. When I get home, I'm so wired. I mean, I'll be up for another two hours before before it's time for me to go to bed. <laughs> we are here with Tatum from the Clipper Spirit Dance Team. Now, Tatum, this is your first year. What has the season like been like for you so far? It's been an incredible experience. Like, I'm having the time of my life, and 
not only being able to dance on this court, um, meeting all the new girls, it's been so much fun and I'm having such a great time. Now, what inspired you to want to audition to do this? My sister was actually on the Junior Jam Squad like three years ago. So I got to come and watch and I always saw the um, Clipper Spirit dancing and I was just like, gosh, I want to do that. Like I was so jealous and when I turned 18, I was like, you know what, I'm going to try out and then I'm here now, so it worked out great. You know, I think something a lot of people don't know, of course, is that you have a great dance background and you absolutely have to to dance here because as I watch you guys pregame even, there's so much to learn. Yes, yes, definitely. We learn like 20 routines and I mean, not right off the bat, we learn like four or five and then we can like consecutively learn some. So it's been, it's been difficult. You have to memorize a lot, but it's been a great, great experience. And I love dancing, so it's like the perfect job. <laughs> what kind of dance did you do before you came here? Because I think people wonder, you know, do I have to learn tap or jazz or, or what kind? I actually did a lot. I did jazz, ballet, tap, hip hop. So I did the whole competition thing at a studio. But some girls didn't. Some just did. They didn't do competition. They just took classes and just liked to dance for fun. But I grew up doing competitive dancing and then when I, you know, graduated from that, I was like, you know what, I want to do something professional. I want to be on a professional team, have some friends that dance with me, and yeah. Now, are you a big basketball fan, we have to ask? Yes, I am. That's my favorite sport. I love basketball, so it's great. Have you had a chance to actually meet some of the fans over the last, I guess we're almost at the halfway point, so have you had a chance to meet and talk to fans as well? Yes, yes. When we, like, take pictures at doors and, like, you know, the fans will say hi and they're very sweet and it's super fun. I've when you're not here, what do you like to do to sort of relax and have fun? Um, I love watching movies. <laughs> I'm a big movie girl. Like I've seen like every movie. Just me and my sister will be like, hey, what movie are we watching today? So I mean of course I love hanging out with my friends and all that, but like a great night for me is having friends over and we're like, okay, what movie are we watching? And like I love that. You need that girl time yeah, too. Yeah, of course.